Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So I get inspiration for podcasts from a lot of different places. And I had written down in my journal this morning what I wanted to podcast about. It's just something, it just, it comes through me. I don't really have any way to, to explain it other than that. It's just, it's just inspiration that comes through. I think at times, I really strongly actually believe at times that I'm just, I am the messenger here. I am simply the vessel upon which this message, and I don't mean to say this in this like grandiose way, like some kind of like fucking prophet. No, 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 not like that at all. It's just, I really feel like, you know, this is one of the big things that I'm here to do is to be this, this voice. I say that with absolute humility, a voice for women that, you know, when so many of you will reach out to me and say, um, you know, oh my God, like it was exactly what I need to hear today. Like, how do you how did you know that? And do you watch me? Like, how? and I'll say to them, as I might have said to you, if you've said this or you've thought this, is I, I get that all the time. And they go, well, how do you? And it, uh, it just comes through me, man. It's this deep truth. You know, when you speak deep truth, it, it, you know, we feel it. We feel it, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter who it comes from. It doesn't matter if we like that person or not. You know, we're, there's going to be some kind of a response when we feel a deep truth when somebody is in that place of just pure service and love and caring you know it's just whatever is going to need to come through is what comes through and so I've worked very hard in my life for the past 50 years intense work over the past year and a half two years year and a half for sure of just getting really more and more clear more clear more clear more emptying more healing more moving through things, more uncovering beliefs, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the journey continues, by the way, forever. This is just the way it is. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, you just keep becoming, you just keep becoming more and more and more of who you are. And the inspiration on that very, very long winded (laughs) uh, monologue is uh, actually was just dropping the kids off at school. And um, there was like a notice up on the board or like this little, just a little bulletin board thing, whatever, that says something like, um, it was something about belonging. And I was like, ah, yeah, here's what I need to speak into today. So you belong here, sister. You belong here, brother. Mm -hmm. Lots of men listen to the podcast too. And I love you for listening. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you sharing with the women in your life. Thank you so much belong here you belong here we all want to belong don't we and I don't necessarily mean by that like we follow right like like we're sheep you know we're just kind of blindly following that's not what that is we want to belong there's this deep-seated feeling of like I just want to feel like I belong I want to feel like I belong you know to something to a family inside of a relationship I want to feel like I belong inside of what I do for work or business. You know, I want to feel like I belong inside of my extended family in a community. I want to feel like I belong as a woman or as a man. And I want to feel like I belong here on this planet. Like there is, there is a purpose and a reason and uh, what I do and who I be in my life matters. And I, I want you to hear this today because just like I said at the top of this podcast, right? It's just, it's always something you need to hear. I just, I need you to know that you belong here. You belong here. Exactly where you are right now. Now, you might not be in a great place in your life right now, going through a lot of challenges. You go, well, I don't know if I belong here. Yeah, you do actually belong there. You belong here. You belong wherever you are. Was it Ram Dass that said, wherever you go, there you are? Like, you belong here. I'm going to invite you to encourage you to trust whatever is unfolding in your life right now. It is not easy. 
to let go of the control when you might feel like your life is so spinning out of control right now that you just want to grasp any little control you can, right? What happens when we're driving a car and we skid on ice or we hide a plane across like rain, a lot of moisture on the road, like we try to kind of gain control, but you know what happens with that. I've given this analogy before. If you've ever been driving, which I'm going to assume most of us has, and we would have, and we've either hit ice or you've hit like, you know, a hydroplane because it's been heavy rainfall and the car just goes, right? Like the four wheels tractioning onto the road are not working. You can, you can't steer out of that. And you know, what needs to happen is for you to actually not crash or, you know, get hurt or injured is you actually have to steer in to the swerve you have to steer into where you're going out of control it's crazy right it seems so counterintuitive but i remember so like actually i'm thinking about it right now when this happened to me several years ago gosh it was probably like let me see it's maybe a year or two after we opened our practice i'm gonna say it's like 2004 ish 2003 2004 and yeah, hitting some ice was kind of a swervy road. We had a Jeep at the time. And I was like, oh, four-wheel drive, no problem. I got this. And it was like, whoa, doesn't matter how many wheels you got on your drive. Like, if you hit ice, you're just going. And I, it was so funny because I, I steered right into where I was going out of control. Something just made me react in a, you know, proper way, safe way. And what happened was insane, right? If you ever had this experience, it's so crazy. It's like you swerve into it. And then I basically like, you know, swerve to go off the road, right? Where it's spinning into something. And then I was, and then suddenly the wheels just kind of turned. And then I turned, was like swerved less left into where it was starting to go off the road. I went, I just, I steered right into the out of control. And then what happened is my wheels actually gripped and I was able to steer back onto the right side of the road. And it literally happened like, boom, like I want to say, I don't know, a three seconds, five seconds, maybe max, right? Where it's just like, woo, everything kind of slowed down. I was able to, whoosh, because I went into it, right? I went into it. I went into the pain. I went into that place of like, oh my God, I went into the out of control and I allowed myself to actually experience that for that split second. And then I moved out of it. So even though that you might be in a place right now where you're feeling like things are out of control, you belong here in that moment too, because there's something there for you. It's part of that greater purpose. Who do I know? I've kind of back to this analogy when I was driving the car of like, you know, I was just like, oh, like I got this. I'm in a Jeep. Like, do do. Let me just drive like really fast because I like to drive fast and and I'm just cranking the music and like I'm good and I'm good. And who knows if, you know, that experience was like a wake up call of like, hey, Karen, pay attention. Right. Hey, Karen, don't be. I wasn't like a careless driver, but just kind of like you know, maybe not being quite as alert, a little bit too like lax, right? Like psh, nothing's going to happen to me feeling like I'm superwoman, right? Perhaps that was, that was the wake up call that saved me from something. I mean, who knows, right? Every place that you're in, you belong right there in that moment. The joy that you're in, that you think is fleeting, that you think of, oh my God, it's all getting taken away. It's okay. You belong here. The place that you might be in, which is like, I don't know where I am. I feel so ungrounded. I don't, I don't feel like I know what's coming up next. I don't feel like I know what to do. You belong here. The feeling that you might have again of the out of control and the oh shit and the what the fuck and you belong here. These are all spaces and places of belongingness that are okay. And just like when I was driving the car, if I was to resist out of that out of control feeling and go like, I don't belong here because I'm in a Jeep. I shouldn't do this. It's in four wheel drive. Like what the hell kind of thing. I've driven in snow and ice before. Why is this that? Right. If I resisted that, well, I just would have created probably a big old accident. Maybe it would involve another vehicle. I could have gotten hurt. Somebody else could have gotten hurt. It could have been a completely different outcome, right? Wait a second. I don't belong here. This should not be happening. And I understand because it is hard to let go of that control. 
It is really, really hard. You don't have to be a quote unquote controlling type A, whatever kind of label you want to put in there. It's just a, when you're feeling like things are spinning out of control, if you can just grasp onto one little piece, then it might have this feeling of like, okay, all is well. Cause I got this little teeny blade of grass here. Everything else is like, wow, crumbling down, but I'm holding on to this one thing and I'm okay. Cause I got this one thing. So to completely let go of that control, to be like, I don't know, to be completely open, that's so hard and terrifying. This is, and this is, by the way, this is the bigger ego work. This is the bigger, bigger, you know, peering in behind the curtains of the darkness. This is the really questioning beliefs. This is the work that most people don't want to do. And so if you are here right now in this moment and it is like, holy shit, midlife crisis, maybe spiritual awakening, come to Jesus moment. I see you. I know this experience deeply. I'm coming out the other side. There's still downs. They're still there. It's still life. But when I reflect back on the last year and a half to two years, I belonged in every single moment. Every single piece of it served. And the more that I actually realize that I, I, I do belong. I'm not separate. Right? You know, this is, if you look at any kind of spiritual book, any kind of spiritual teaching or text... It is this feeling of separateness that we, we, you know, it happens to us at some point. It can be from really little. We had something incredibly traumatic maybe happen to us, or it could be something where just, you know, we're wounded by our parents. We all get wounded by our parents at some point. Spoiler alert, we're doing it to our kids too. We're just trying to not have it be as much. Like we were called to heal our wounds so we don't continue this shit with our own children. And what you think your beliefs are or not, there is legitimate, legitimate people in this field of, we're going to call it self-development, self-awareness, spirituality, that are seeing that a lot of the stuff that we're carrying, the wounds, like they're not even ours. We're carrying stuff of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents. Like we're being called at a, you know, a collective level more than ever to awaken and to clear these wounds. And we need to know first and foremost that you, that I, that we all belong here. None of the separateness stories that are being fed to you by ego, which by the way, is that false self. It's the the self that we created from whatever experiences have happened in our life out of protection. Okay. So here was my kind of false self. It's a still a piece of who we are. It's not like to go like, oh, well, I lied about myself. No, no, no. It's who you believe to be true at the time. And for me, it was very much, it's still a piece of me, but it was really sharp of like, fuck you, fuck everybody, go fuck yourself. I'm, I'm this, I'm going to create this massive wall around me. And I'm, I'm not, no one's really, I'm going to let a couple people in a little bit here and there. But, you know, anytime that somebody, like, upsets me, triggers me, I'm just going to create this big old wall of anger. Like, that was my 20s. Still into my 30s. A little trickling in my 40s. You know, if I knew back then what I know to be true now. So, listen, a lot of my story, my journey that I share, it's to really, it's, it's to my intention, my hope, my purpose and meaning is to go, like, you don't have to spend this much time that I spent searching or numbing or, and maybe you are, maybe you're my age at 50, around 50, or you're older. You're like, shit, Karen, I get you. And I'm this age or I'm like right there with you. Okay, cool. You belong here too. I don't take a look at anything that's happened in my past life and go, that was a mistake because everything brought me to a different experience. It was all as it needed to unfold. You belong here. You are not separate. I understand the story of nobody gets me. Nobody understands me. There's nobody like me. Maybe you don't feel like you're like other women. Uh, I don't feel like I belong. I All this stuff. Like, I know that was my narrative, my story, my sad song for years, decades. And it kept me in that place. Protect yourself, said ego. Don't show them all of who you are, Karen, because if you do, man, they're not going to be able to handle you. 
And so I stuffed it down for years and not until I hit like my early 40s, I started to really like uncover a lot of these beliefs a lot like wait a second is this true start to really invest in myself time energy money coaches reading studying like at a deeper level even though i started reading tony robbins books back in my 20s when he was just infomercials by the way at that point people were like tony robbins he had written his second book i think around that point i think it was awaken the giant within that was his second book yeah unlimited power was his first like, and so I've been on this path for a while. James Redfield's Celestine Prophecy, Seed the Soul. Like, a lot of these books started to kind of come out around the time of, like, early to mid-90s. This kind of greater consciousness and awakening. But it's at this point now where it is just like, boo, like a vibration. And so if you were there right now and you're searching and, you know, trying and you can kind of feel like, man, it is the way that I've been showing up. That's not really me. There's a bigger sense of me. I don't feel like myself. And that's because you're not who you are. Just feeling like, I don't know who I am. Yeah. That's because you're beginning to have the little, the, the whisperings, the, 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 the rumblings of remembering who you really are. And it's not who you've been showing up with. And it's nothing wrong with that. This is just your higher self. This is your truer self wanting to emerge. It is like a painful fucking birth. It is. This is not easy work. You know, this is the work that we're going to begin to go really deep on when I do my one one two more retreat experience in January 2020. And these women will come out the other end of this, like completely transformed, but it'll be continuing, right? It'll be continuing of this work. It's just a, a, at a retreat experience, like we're going to go really deep inside a sister of women that are like them going through the same thing. Well, it just means you get to kind of like, you get to hyperspeed on this experience, right? It's not like trying to figure this out by yourself. I have the tools and the, the way and how to do this and have been coaching this way for the last little bit of time. As I've learned how to get through this, and now I teach it to you, but you belong here, sister. You belong here. You were not created by happenstance. You were not here because of some kind of a mistake or like, you know, you've made these choices in your life and somehow you fucked it all up and, you know, who are you? Are you a failure? It's like, no, like just let that go. You belong here. And I know there's a piece of you, even if you're in the place of like, oh, okay, Karen, rolling your eyes, like, you know, there's some piece of this that I know is landing as truth for you. There's a reason you're hearing this message right now. And there's a reason that you're here because you belong here. Own that, claim that, know that to be true. Sister brother. You belong here. So here's your more tip for today. Listen to this episode five times, five more times, five more times, five more times over and over. If you need to, I don't know, once today, once more, it doesn't matter. Just listen to it again and again and again. There'll be something deeper that I sense and I feel and I intuit that you're going to hear each time that you listen to it again. And if you need to hear my voice saying to you, you belong here. You're here for a reason and a purpose. You're hearing this little sound bite of my sound bite of my voice in your head. Cool. Whatever is needed for you to begin to actually receive this message, I'm all for it. You belong here. And I love you. And you belong here. So I mentioned about the woman wanting more retreat experience. I am so honored. I am so excited. I am so ready to come back to being face to face, eyeball to eyeball, heart to heart, soul to soul with women in my beautiful city where I live, Victoria, BC, Canada in January, 2020, I'm about two and a half months away from this right now. So there are 12 spots for this experience. This is for women that are in a space where they're like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm hitting a wall. I'm at a crisis. I'm at a crossroads. I don't know what to do. You most likely has to have tried a lot of things. It's not like you're just sitting and resting on your laurels and going, well, whatever. Like, 
no, you've tried a lot of things, but you just, you've realized that you cannot do this by yourself. You're trying in isolation. You tried all the ways that you've tried and it's just like, it's not working. And you're just gotten to a point where like, this is costing me way too much right now to continue to be like this. If this continues, this is going to be some big old consequences, bigger than already happening right now. And I'm ready. I'm ready to be in an experience that's going to help to transform me. I am ready to shift. I don't know how it's going to happen. It scares the hell out of me, but there's something in my heart that's saying, take this jump. Okay. If this is you, sister, this is speaking to you. Here's what you need to do to apply because yes, this is by application only. I need to make sure that this is a fit for you. So there are 10 spots remaining. There'll be 12 spots total. The first two were already have gone, been through a ton of application calls this past week, had accepted two women. They've, you know, they've invested their tuition. They're ready. They're like, they're in for those first two seats. So there are 10 remaining. So here's what you need to do to apply. Simply send me an email, drkarenosburn at gmail.com. Okay, drkarenosburn at gmail.com. And simply say, Karen, I would like to apply for the retreat experience. Okay. If you receive my newsletter, by the way, you'll see on the PS, I've been talking about this the last week in the newsletter. You just click on the button. You can apply right from there. Okay. But otherwise, send me an email, Dr. Karen Osborne, D-R-K-A-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com and say, I'd like to apply for the retreat and I will connect with you within 24 hours or less. All right, sister. I will talk to you in the next episode. A life of more really is one step away from knowing that you belong here every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com newsletter.